Hey guys, welcome back to the Coffee Talk series. Coffee Talk, because I give you some important and hopefully interesting information in the time it takes to drink a cup of coffee. So, grab your cup, pour your coffee, or perhaps you prefer tea, or even a healthy smoothie, and grab your seat and listen to today's topic, which is infertility issues and black women. So, without further ado, let's drink this About 12% of American women of reproductive age have impaired fertility. In the black community, infertility is something of a taboo topic. Also, infertility services have long focused overwhelmingly on white women. Studies suggest that black women may be twice as likely as white women to have fertility problems, but are far less likely to seek or receive infertility treatment. Many black women facing infertility say they face an uphill battle in getting care. Challenges include not having insurance that covers the cost of infertility services, a lack of black sperm and egg donors, prejudices from physicians, and feelings of shame and isolation. Those who do seek care can find themselves feeling deeply uncomfortable in a medical space that is overwhelmingly white. The actual number of infertile black women remains unclear because so few women of color have been included in infertility research and studies. African American women have been grossly underrepresented, so it is really hard to quantify the rates. It could be twice as high for African American women or even higher, stated Yentunde Ibrahim a reproductive cardiologist and assistant professor in the obstetrics and gynecology department at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. Even as they struggle with infertility at higher rates, data shows that black women are half as likely as white women to seek or receive infertility care that might allow them to start families. This is an injustice that has permeated our community for too long, and we need to fix this. In a landmark 
2015 study, Silent and Infertile, Rosario Cabello, a University of Michigan psychologist and associate dean, interviewed 50 women about their experiences with infertility. She was floored that all the work on fertility was being done on white, very wealthy couples. She learned that women of color are more impacted, and this seemed to be a clear injustice. The trauma for those struggling with infertility is often compounded by the legacy of painful stereotypes about black female sexuality, some of them reaching back to the centuries when enslaved women were expected to breed children for their owners. There are these myths that black women are supposed to be hyper fertile and baby making machines. Many black women with infertility feel alone and carry a sense of shame that they have failed, are not complete, or are not strong women. Many can't even discuss the topic of their infertility with friends or their mothers. In many churches can hurt rather than help those struggling with infertility by characterizing an inability to conceive as God's plan. According to the CDC, the incident of infertility is higher in black women than in white women and it is steadily increasing. The National Institute of Health, NIH, defines infertility as the inability for women between the ages of 15 and 44 to get pregnant after at least one year of actively trying to conceive, and for men, the inability to impregnate a woman. The NIH also states that women who can become pregnant but cannot carry a pregnancy to term birth may also be considered infertile. We don't trust many doctors. Look at J. Marion Sims. They call him the father of gynecology and he practiced surgery on enslaved women without anesthesia. Look at the Tuskegee experiments. And this may be one of the issues as to why too many women of color seek infertility care much later than they should, when it can be harder to help them conceive. Overall, I believe the major issues are the lack of insurance coverage for infertility issues, along with lack of black sperm and egg donors, and the stereotype that black women don't have fertility issues. Well, guys, that's my cue to get out of here. Go have myself another cup of coffee and come up with ideas for the next Coffee Talk. I will leave more information down in the description of this video. Please don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And also, please subscribe to my channel. Follow me on all my other social media listed here, and I'll see you guys in the next Coffee Talk. Until then, peace and blessings.
Bye, you guys. Bye.